Hey everybody, Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Vortex Viper Miniature Red Dot Optic. One of the things I like to do, mainly because my, my main job is, is firearms instruction, is I like to be knowledgeable about products that I'm likely to see in classes, uh, especially the more popular ones. Uh, when it comes to handguns, uh, specifically, uh, I generally, anytime new iron sights come out, I buy them, I throw them on a gun, uh, and I see what they're like. And that's no different uh, when we start talking about miniaturized red dot optics. If you don't know, I'm a huge proponent of the mounting of a miniature red dot on a handgun because it is a more physiologically natural way to shoot. Uh, it's a advantageous way to shoot. The problem, of course, with miniaturized red dot optics on the handgun is reliability. One of the issues uh, when, the, when the system first became popular uh, and moving forward you know, uh, basically a decade ago and, and moving forward from there, even though they've been around longer than that, is some of them just aren't as reliable as others. So I like to get my hands on as many of them as I can uh, to put them through an evaluation phase. Now, I don't film all of this because, again, I have a YouTube channel. I am not a YouTube channel. Uh, I make videos, but I'm not necessarily a video maker as my primary profession, if you will. Uh, so this is my second run through with this particular uh, optic. The first one, I had an electronics failure. Um, if, you, if you're curious about the round count on that anything, it's in my uh, uh, MRDS for duty use white paper that I put out earlier this year that you can find on the sagedynamics.org website. It's on the landing page. You can scroll down, download it as a PDF and check it out. That's also a living document, which means the information from this particular review will go in there along with any other MRDS that I'm currently evaluating. And I'm generally evaluating three or four of them at the same time, either for lifespan or till failure. Uh, not all MRDS optics are created equal. So I wanted to give Vortex another chance uh, with this particular model of optic just to see if the first time I ran through was a fluke, a one-off, something like that. The Vortex Viper definitely has some appealing features. One of them being it's got a very small footprint when compared to some of the other optics out there. Uh, it also offers a, a reasonable dot size, easy adjustments, uh, and a reasonable battery life for what you're getting. Now, one of the things that was kind of a non-starter for me as far as features go right off the bat is it has the auto-off feature, meaning if the optic sits for X amount of hours, uh, eventually it just turns off. Not a huge deal uh, for some because you're not going to be needing the gun 24-7, so to speak, but when I pick the firearm up, I want the optic to come on or already be on. Uh, there's other optics out there that offer me that ability, so to not have that, and again, when I evaluate these optics, I'm looking at them from a duty carry standpoint. What I would consider to be an environment where an optic is most likely to encounter uh, the most adversity, if you will. So an optic needs to be able to handle the rigors of duty use, not necessarily military or law enforcement, just uh, and not necessarily abuse, but hard use, austere environments, things of that nature. So when I evaluate the optics, and I evaluate every optic to the same standard, which I'll get into, uh, it needs to be able to meet that standard. And for me, that auto-off feature, the fact that when I pick the optic up, if it's in auto-off, it doesn't naturally come on, I actually have to hit a button to turn it back on, that's a non-starter for me as far as duty use. That doesn't necessarily discount it, from obviously a range gun or even for someone who's going to conceal carry and their budget does not allow them to get one of the more expensive optics. I mounted the Viper on my Glock 17 Gen 4 MOS, which is what I use for most of my evaluations just because it'd be pretty cost prohibitive to mill a slide for every single optic I evaluate. And I'm not a really big fan of the dovetail mounts, although I still use them and have used them in the past. But uh, one of the things I really liked about the optic was the viewing window. It's got a good window, which window size is somewhat irrelevant. Uh, once you factor the way that you use the optic, as long as you're getting good presentation on the gun, the optic window, does, the size of the optic window doesn't matter as much, and most of these optics have a very similar size window. But that was definitely one of the things I noticed, is it was more of a generous window than, than some of the op other optics that are out there. 
the dot, uh, as far as dot focus, um, once you're actually target focused, that dot is clean, crisp. Uh, there's not a lot of blooming and not a lot of divergence with it, even when I go with the brightness all the way up. Now, on the, on the topic of brightness, I would like to see them offer one or two more, I guess, uh, brightness settings. I, I feel like the dot in super bright sunlight, while usable, it could stand to be a little brighter in those environments. Now, if you're not familiar with the review process, uh, just for my review videos that I do, I put uh, anything, pretty much anything firearms generally related through 2,000 rounds of evaluation before I do a video on it. Now, my MRDS evaluation is uh, indefinite, meaning I will continue to evaluate the optic until the optic breaks. Uh, and at that point, I'll be like, hey, this optic made it X amount of rounds through X amount of tests. Now, with my, my standardized uh, optic testing, I'm going to do every 500 rounds, I'm going to do durability testing, which includes manipulations using the optic body and also drop testing. Where most optics fail is going to be the drop testing, but that doesn't mean that just based on design, they can't fail before that because I've had optics fail well before 500 rounds or not during a drop test, uh, just from recoil and use. So to begin the review process, well, one of the first things I did once I got the uh, optic zero is I accelerated that first 500 rounds doing, as you know, the burn down. During the burn down, I fired two of the most common ammunitions uh, that I use and that you're going to see in 9mm, uh, 124 and 124 plus P, just to give some, some more accelerated recoil on that slide, uh, a little bit more force being delivered to the optic itself. During that 500 round review pro or that 500 round burn down, no issues. The optics stayed clean. Um, one of the things that definitely is worth noticing or worth mentioning, of course, is something I've seen with some other optics in the past is um, refresh rate. Uh, how consistent is the dot uh, under heavy use? Is, are you losing or getting any flickering as the slide is reciprocating uh, or do it extended, uh, extended round counts? And that's not something I experienced with this optic. Uh, the dot remains whatever brightness setting you're at and even when you're really, really going cyclic on the trigger and getting really, really fast, the dot is returning to you uh, at the consistent brightness. There's no flickering, no phasing, no refreshing issues that you're having. Uh, and the same thing with moving from target to target. Uh, some lower quality optics, the faster you move, the more you just pick up that visible flicker of the dot. Uh, it's not something I experienced on this optic, so I'm definitely happy for that. Now, after that first 500 rounds, I began uh, my durability testing. I do that in two ways. The first way is slide manipulations. Because the optic mounting on the slide gives you much more purchase to manipulate the slide if you have to, that's something I'm gonna check. Now, the chances of you needing to do that if you have two hands available to you, it's probably not something you would or should do because it's just faster just to manipulate with your other hand because you have two hands. Uh, but it's something that's been incorporated into training and practice for people who are worried about losing the use of one of their hands or their hand is busy doing something else and it can't let go. If you think of just from a citizen's point of view, if you've got a small child uh, and you need to maintain a firm grasp of them and work a firearm at the same time, again, getting closer to the, the light, unlikely situations, but still very possible. And if I experience a malfunction on my gun, which I think everybody could agree would be a very bad day, uh, I want to be able to manipulate the gun with one hand. I need to be able to, uh, to perform my malfunction clearance with one hand. So it's a wounded hand drill or one hand only drill or whatever you want to call it. It's something that's done, it's something that's practiced and for very good reason. So in this situation, even though I would not necessarily advocate using your optic body to manipulate the gun, in this situation it is the best uh, option you have available to you. So I'm going to simulate that using dummy rounds. What I do is I take take my magazine and I take a handful of rounds and a couple dummy rounds mixed in there and I just go ahead and load. Uh, and if I experience a failure to fire, I can tap and rack using the optic body. And I'm going to do that a lot uh, to simulate, not even really simulate, to actually practice the use of the optic being used to manipulate the slide. 
After that first round of manipulations, I did a zero check. Zero was still exactly where it was supposed to be. I didn't lose, uh, as far as I can tell, just based on my shooting ability, my zero distance at 25 yards, uh, zero was maintained. But of course, the next step was the drop test. Now, my drop tests are done the same for every optic. It's a shoulder height on optic drop. First drop was successful, which was somewhat surprising. Uh, and not because I doubt the quality necessarily of the brand, but because of the design of the optic window uh, and that protective shroud, it's oval in shape, which means a lot of force, depending on where it's land, is gonna be delivered point to exactly on the glass where it hits. Uh, there's nothing work designed into uh, the shroud to help prevent that. No secondary protection of shroud or a different shape or something like that. Uh, so it did survive the first drop test. Now, I've had people criticize my drop testing because it's from shoulder height. And they say, well, I would never drop my gun from shoulder height. My answer to that is, okay, cool. Uh, I'm not necessarily tailoring my testing to your opinion on how durable an optic should be. Instead, I'm going with a worst case scenario so someone can have confidence in their purchase of an optic for a handgun that they're gonna carry for duty or self-defense use. So if your gun just sits in a safe and it's gonna fall out of a safe that's not at shoulder height onto your floor, uh, then this optic may, may or may not be for you. If that's not something you feel like you would ever do, then okay, cool, uh, nod and move on. It's not that big of a deal. After the drop test, we get into the next 500 rounds and in the next line of manipulations using just the optic body and our next drop test. So that was two shoulder height drop tests on concrete and I am impressed. Uh, no crack, no loss of zero. Uh, granted, the shroud's gonna get damaged, scratched up, scuffed, who gives a shit? It's, it's, it's cosmetic. Um, but that's two uh, shoulder height drop tests so far, and the Venom just keeps right on ticking, which uh, is pleasantly surprising to me. Uh, again, not because I doubted the quality of the brand, but because of the design just doesn't lend itself as well to protecting from a drop at that height as some other optics would. Another 500 rounds. And as you can see, this is where the optic gave up the ghost, so to speak. On the third drop test, I experienced a catastrophic failure of the lens. Uh, I'm still impressed. Uh, granted, um, I'm, I'm disappointed in a way that the optic wasn't able to continue to make it on and on and on and on, but it made it through 15 and rounds, including three shoulder height drop tests, well, two shoulder height drop tests on concrete failing on the third. Uh, so. When I compare it, and I don't like to do comparison reviews, I like everything to stand on its own merits, but when I think in my head of all the optics I've reviewed in the past and the ones that I'm continuing to work on now and how many times I've had other ones fail, uh, this is not a, the worst optic I've ever reviewed. In fact, it does have some, some very good attributes to it. If you already own this optic and you use it for concealed carry or just for a hobby gun that uses the range, then you can continue to have confidence in the optics performance. Again, I wasn't able to get the round count on it that I wanted. I wanted to at least get 2,000 rounds through this, uh, and, and then four, and then six, and then eight, and ten, and so on and so forth, to see if it was going to make it long term. Now, if I removed the drop testing uh, from my evaluation procedure, which I'm not going to do, but let's just say for the sake of argument that I did, uh, I don't see any reason why this optic wouldn't consider, can continue to perform just based on the uh, the design. Uh, when you look at the actual battery connections you get inside and you take a look at how things are constructed, they're very, very well suited for use of that optic on a handgun. Uh, whereas some of the optics, uh, other optics that are out there aren't necessarily, they don't lend themselves as well to extended life service uh, on the slide of a handgun that reciprocates very, very violently every time you pull the trigger, uh, which leads to a lot of shock being, uh, well, encountered or experienced, if you will, by the optic itself. Uh, that said, I would not recommend this optic for duty use, for law enforcement duty use, for military use, obviously. Um, this is not something I would trust in an exposed duty carry holster that's gonna be, especially as a secondary weapon system, is gonna bang into doors and car doors and uh, just the environment in general is gonna take some, take some tussles. 
Uh, not something I'd recommend for, for duty use, but for concealed carry use, I don't really see any reason why this wouldn't be a reasonable optic to use if that's what's in your budget. Uh, is it the best? I'm not going to say that it's the worst. Um, I think that's up to ultimately up to the end user if it's something, if they're willing to accept the fact that this is going to be slightly more fragile than some of the other optics out there. Uh, I think that Vortex is headed in the right direction with their optic quality, and this is definitely uh, worlds better than some of the first Vortex MRDSs I looked at years ago. I'm glad to see that they're continuing to think about, hey, how can we make this better? How can we make this more durable? How can we make this more appealing? Not necessarily just from an aesthetic standpoint, but from a durability standpoint to basically get in the race, so to speak, with some of, the other, some of their other competitors. Uh, so I won't say this is the worst optic I've, I've ever evaluated, uh, and I will probably pick up another one and throw it back in the evaluation pool with, along with the other optics I'm using. Um, so don't consider this to be a category failure. Remember, it survived two shoulder height drop tests on concrete. Uh, it didn't quite survive the third one, and that's just uh, unfortunate, but that's just the nature of the design. And I do understand that these optic designers are somewhat limited in what they can do because patents are a thing and other companies grabbed the best designs and patented the best designs first when it comes to uh, shape of shrouds in the body to protect their optical lens uh, when it is dropped. But um, yes, it did fail my review process, but I would not 100% discount it because of that because again, it survived two out of the three, two of the, two of the drop tests before I got to the third one where it actually failed. Uh, my only other gripe, of course, I would like to see them change that auto off feature. Maybe a motion sensing technology could be introduced into it or something similar to that. So when I pick the op or when I pick my handgun up or I draw my handgun or whatever, uh, my optic is going to be on regardless of, has it been 14 hours yet? Do I need to hit the little button to reset that internal clock? I don't want to have to worry about that. I want the optic to be on when I press the gun out to pick up my dot. Uh, so that if, if I would recommend anything, uh, the first thing I would recommend is they change that. Uh, it may cut down on overall battery life, and then of course you got to take that back to the lab and see if you can make adjustments to extend your battery life, even if you're messing with your auto-off features, and, and I totally get that. Uh, but if they had that feature in there alone, I would probably be more willing to recommend it over some of the other optics that are out there. That being said, I'm not going to 100% discount this optic because it did surprise me. It, it, it was more durable than I was expecting. Uh, based on my previous experience with this model. So I'm not gonna give it two thumbs up or five stars or anything like that, but I will say if you're on a budget uh, or you're dot curious and you're looking to get into something that's gonna give you a little bit of quality, but it's not gonna break the bank, this is definitely a pretty good optic to start with. I'm Aaron Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.